So I'm excited to be talking to Clayton Coleman. Clayton is the lead contributor to Kubernetes and one of the lead architects here at Red Hat. How has Linux containers, how has that evolved and impacted this concept of the cloud movement? You know, people taking their workloads from on-premise data centers, right, and moving them into different cloud providers. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. So there's the classic way of thinking about it is like we have all this infrastructure and so people think of ways to use it. So like we had machines, people ran software on there, and we had VMs, and VMs were just better machines. I think containers are actually the first part, maybe the first place where we started to flip from being focused on the infrastructure, right? Like ops teams were making all these decisions for you and you weren't really involved. It used to be, right, they would throw it over the wall to the operations team they, who would then create a virtual machine image in many cases mm -hmm. with the application payload and whatever they wanted to configure at the operating system level. And that, of course, was rife with possible errors, human errors. We have solutions for that, like Ansible, Ansible playbooks. Yep. But it was still a challenge. You know, it was still the handoff, if you will. Right. And with Linux containers now, it's on the dev side. They can actually be more responsible for that stack. We know we're trying to make software easier for developers to consume. Um, and as this role shift is happening, where more and more people are taking ownership of their software all the way um, to where end users access it, um, Linux containers really helped be a they help provide that kind of fundamental uh, building block. And then that explosion that you, we saw with public cloud really tied into that as well as, you know, there's all these places that you can run Linux software. Developer productivity is greatly impacted by the Linux container, right? They can now bundle up that software with all the right dependencies inside it and move it from place to place as it needs to go. And more importantly, they've codified their infrastructure, if you will, right? right. Within the, you know, they have files that they can check in the storage control that basically just tell you how to build the stack of the software that they need to run on. Right, and a lot of these practices that, you know, are so fundamental to modern software, they're not new but it's how easy they are for everyone to apply it. I just ran my script right. and it installed across all of them because it was the same API now, the same user experience, both at the console level and the CLI, right? OC new app or cube control, <laughs> you know, deploy, right? Uh, you know, apply dash F deployment YAML. All that worked beautifully. <laughs> Kubernetes and OpenShift are synonymous with the hybrid cloud. Right. And when people think multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, how do I going to stretch my application from this data center to that data center to this cloud to that cloud, Kubernetes is now the entire story that seems to be the way people are going to do that going forward. They're doing it by providing value. And that is the best possible outcome of any technology is it makes you more successful and you have the choice of how deeply you buy into that. Um, some of what we've seen is um, as the software choices change, you're probably not always gonna stay on one public cloud. And so when we can make choices that enable others to become more successful, to move their applications, to have portability, um, to be able to get some of the capabilities in the cloud on premise, to be able to um, build on top of a foundation that's the same everywhere, um, those benefit end users. And so for us, you know, Red Hat and, and OpenShift and Kubernetes, it's how do we build tools and technologies that make it easier for people to just keep moving forward? You know, for, for every new application written on the cloud, there's a thousand applications sitting in someone's data center that could benefit from rolling updates or the ability to consolidate their footprint or the ability to roll out a critical security patch every week. Most people have to get in the mindset anyway is there's nothing's perfect. You need that flexibility to be able to run anywhere, but you also need the flexibility to be able to update anything. And Red Hat's uniquely positioned as someone who both helps build the infrastructure software, helps provide the platform, and helps provide a lot of those software packages that people depend on, and Red Hat will be there for customers. Well, Clayton, thank you so much for today. I'm excited about the future of Kubernetes and Linux Container and OpenShift and what it means to our customers. And so thank you so much for that conversation.